Today's Snail Mace Warrior partner is Become Stronger. We want to take the time to thank them for the offer that will be provided during this episode and for teaming up with the podcast to provide a better listening experience for you. You can find out more about Become Stronger at become-stronger.com. All right, guys, still makes a warrior here. We're on episode 14 at this point, which is amazing. I, I didn't think I'd get this far with the podcast, uh, but here we are. And today I'm actually excited because we have a double team. So we have two individuals, awesome individuals um, on the camera and um, on the podcast. So um, tell us a little bit about New Breed May Spell um how it got started maybe going a little bit on your guys's background individually and then kind of going from there like how you guys got to the mace okay so um our story is pretty much uh lily and i met probably almost 17 years ago wow um and i was uh walking to take a bus to go teach a martial arts class and lily was on her way home from work and i was able to persuade her to come teach with me Okay. Just and, like um, instantly, just like that. I know. I know, I know right? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's how. That's how most kidnapping starts. Hey, that's yeah. <laughs> that's kidnapping. Right. That's awesome. But uh, yeah, she. Uh, we we have been talking a little bit. We. I saw her on the street. I said, "What are you doing?" She says, "I'm going home to watch TV." I said, "I wish I could go home and watch TV. I'm going to my second job." She said, "I wish I could go teach martial arts." I said, "Well, go get a pair of sneakers." Right. And uh, that was it. That's how I started. Mm -hmm. And then she came down. Yep. Right and I on. went down. Yep. I saw him start teaching, like choking out bigger people than him. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I love. He started taking out, I mean, guys that were really big. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like, <laughs> this is like, I'm like <sighs> soaking this all in. So when we were done, um, you know, he wanted to go out to, you know, go eat something, whatever. And I'm like, uh, no, how did you choke out these people? This is what I want to learn. This <laughs> is what I want. And then from then on, we just started training with each other. Yeah. yeah. I knew she was a winner right then and there. You know? <laughs> That's crazy. And at this point, you guys, were you, did you own a gym or, or were you teaching somewhere else? Um, we were teaching in someone else's martial arts school. Right. We were actually both still had a second job working at Kmart, you know, meeting our bills. Right on. So uh, at that point, we weren't even a business yet. We were just teaching privately in someone else's gym on a Sunday. And basically, we, we teach for free for them during the week just so we could use the place to start our business. Oh, wow. Wow. So for, for the listeners, you know, a lot of times renting a place right off the bat is not the right move. You mm -hmm. got to see if you can create a following first. And yeah. that was our way. Once we, we were booking eight, nine, ten privates in a row, going in the morning, not eating, working all day one-on-ones right through and then that's when we said you know what we we can do this as a business yeah so you guys had that whole hustling mentality you guys were entrepreneurs from the beginning because that sounds like an entrepreneur for me no eating yeah. no fucking sleep yeah, just go nothing. straight at it just straight at it. It. yeah yep right on and then so what led you to because uh from there right you guys i think you mentioned that you had a crossfit gym yeah at some yep. point well we built that clientele the private clientele and then we rent, then that's when we did rent a small little 700 square foot <laughs> place that you literally walk to the front. It's like two steps. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, we started still doing the martial arts and getting into the fitness. And that's when we, you know, I came up with this 21 day program to start bringing people in. And then oh, once God. one person got the word of it, we kept on building from there, building from there, building from there. Then that place, we went across the street to a bigger place. Yeah. And from that bigger place, that's when, you know, like really back then it was only big gyms and nobody knew really what CrossFit was at the time. Right. So when they will walk in, they would say, oh, where's the treadmills? Where's the, you know, where's the machines? And we're like, no, we do, you know, functional training. Yeah. So, you know, that's when CrossFit had came out and it was a good name to have at the time to try to explain sort of what the kind of modalities we would use at the time. Right. Um, so we were Bergen County CrossFit. I mean like one of the first ones in new jersey for over 10 years wow that, that exploded and then we opened the next door place we uh cut a hole in the wall, wall. yeah <laughs> rented out the two places and then you know we started word you know word of mouth went through we built a bigger clientele from there um you know we kept on 
you know, trudging, trudging, trudging. Um, and then finally, you know, we fast forward. A lot of our new programming was our different. Our new programming was different than the traditional CrossFit that was when we first, first started. You know, it wasn't, we never did the whole, you know, the same format that they had. So right. we were going in one direction, they were going in a different direction. So that's right. when we started like more putting our, you know, spin on it, the new breed spin on it. That's awesome. Now going back to your 21 program, what did that consist of? So that one, when we first started, it was 10 private sessions, one-on-one -on -one with nutrition. We will take before and after pictures. And in 10 sessions, we will guarantee you will drop 10 to 15 pounds. Wow. So sessions, 21 days, you will turn around your whole foundation of your body. And literally, so everything, everything we had money back guaranteed. So if we didn't hit our mark, you're getting back your money. And lucky oh. to this day, let me knock on the wood. <laughs> <laughs> it has not happened yet. And everybody, that's, that's how the word really got around because people were dropping 10, 15 pounds and people were telling, no, that's, that's impossible. That, you know, the same. And it was happening over and over. It was proven, proven over and over. And that's how, you know, we got our name out there. Yeah. Well, and work, yeah, I'm sorry. Lily would work with clients and they would say, oh, my doctor wants to call you because she can't believe my blood work changed in just a few weeks. You so. know, and I don't doubt it. I've seen your, your Instagram and I'm like, uh, I think it was Zach in the last episode. He was like, I'm scared of him. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm like, why? He's like, I've seen what Lily does. And it's just, it's just <laughs> crazy. And then with the mace, I'm like, I love that shit. It's awesome. <laughs> I could believe it. I could believe the doctor coming back and like, hey, I don't know what the hell you did, but that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. We, we were unprepared for the, for the success at first. So after 21 days, we didn't even have a follow-up program. So people wanted to stay, and we were like, all right, bye. Like, oh, 10 sessions up. All right, uh, 10 sessions, bye. Like, it was the worst business model ever, <laughs> you know? Wow. But you guys learned from it, and yes. then you started actually. So let's start with, let's go to New Breed now, right? So you guys kind of got out of, well, let's, let's talk about how you got out of the CrossFit business and why you did that, why you transitioned over to the New Breed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so CrossFit was turning for our, our purpose more into Olympic lifting. Mm -hmm. um, people would come to us expecting Olympic lifting or expecting um, they're worried about getting hurt. So that was the two people I was getting. I was getting the hardcore Olympic lifter and the person that was worried about getting hurt. Neither one was our clientele. Um, so we had already at that point started uh, kettlebell sport, clubs, mace, that kind of stuff. And we knew uh, the value of it and we knew we couldn't spread it under the CrossFit name because people are always going to assume CrossFit was Olympic lifting Right, uh, so we started to break off from there and it's scary at first because people knew us as Bergen County CrossFit But what gave us the confidence was a lot of times people didn't say oh, I'm going to the gym They say, you know, I'm going to Lily and Danny's So we knew our name was more valuable and we would keep our clientele because they really liked us They liked the way they were treated. They liked their results. So that was really the key. So that's when we started to really split off so that we could start to really push um, our programming under our own name. Right on. And so <clears throat> when did you guys realize, I want to definitely implement the, implement the MACE? Because you guys have a program out just straight up like MACE, Bell, right? So yeah. how'd you guys know, like, I want to use this tool? Like, this tool is fantastic. Yeah, I, you know, when we first came across MACE, um, like, I, like most things, I wish we could say, oh, we had the foresight to see how awesome it was going to be. But um, we had started using it because we had a, a stick fighter coming to the gym to visit the gym. He was a champion stick fighter. And uh, I wanted a crash course, get back in shape in, you know, three weeks. So I'm like, Lily, I got to get in shape. I don't want to get embarrassed, you know. <laughs> and with this guy that, you know, kicked the shit out of me. <laughs> so, um, you know, I saw the mace um, being advertised somewhere. And I was like, I think I could do my grip stuff with that and it would make the stick feel a lot lighter. And then I started playing around with it and, and just doing our regular programming, but with the mace. And I'm like, it's almost like a kettlebell, but a self-spotting kettlebell where I could spot it with the other hand. So really we put the mace into our already functional programming and it just metabolically had a different feel to us. And one day when I did a few sets of it, um, I went to the local shop right, right after I worked out. I'm online and I almost threw up. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm still feeling the effects of the workout. So I was like, I didn't tell Lily. I was like, oh, I'll make her do the same thing tomorrow. You know? 
and let me see if it happens to her. Yeah. Like maybe I just have, you know, maybe I just have a, a sickness or something, you know? So uh, she did it. And then, you know, she was like, oh, that was hard. But, you know, she's in better shape than me. So I'm like, oh, man, it didn't get her, you know? But then like 15, 20 minutes later, she goes, you know, I'm a little nauseous. And I was like, yes, something's here, you know, we got yeah. something. So there we started, you know, building more exercises. But I would say we kept it between me and Lily um, probably for about a year before we introduced it to any of our clients. Oh, yeah. right. So we were already training with it. We wanted to see the effects, um, especially the effects on uh, our lower back, stuff like that. We have a lot of people we take care of that have injuries or they're athletes. So we don't just throw something in because it looks awesome. We want to make sure that nobody gets hurt and it's super productive. But what we found was um, it was probably the most powerful modality we've ever used yeah. with our programming. Yeah. Right. And that's really when it started to launch. Uh, we, yeah. we introduced, we did a little seminar to teach all our people the basic movements. And then we programmed two straight years of just MACE. Yeah. We had a separate MACE program for two straight years. And the uh, people that were doing MACE, you could see a huge difference in them. In lean muscle and body fat loss, the numbers were moving faster than if you weren't using it. So that's what, then now we, now we force people to use it. No one in our gym doesn't do MACE. Yeah. Wow. We incorporate it into our regular program. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, you mentioned that you used it for a whole year. Did you get any other, did you get any training from anyone else or you guys just went straight into it and you guys just started to like learn on your, like self-taught or? Yeah, it's, that that's, a, yeah, that's a great question. There was for us, you know, I, I'm getting four years ago, right? So there was nothing. Um, I had the DVD, um, Jake Shannon's DVD with uh, Mr. Mace, Mr. Mace Man on it. Um, that was the only thing out there. Uh, I bought an, I think I bought an on it mace and they only had like a five minute download or something at the time. So there was really nothing outside of 10 to two and three sixty. Um, right, right. maybe like a few like core exercises, but not a program. It was kind wow. of like an extra, not a main program. But when we started doing our functional movements and finding ways to implement it, that offset load was so effective for us that we said, no, this could be the main driver in a program. It doesn't have to be a, a secondary tool. That's awesome. So you guys literally made up all these movements, right? In that yeah. year and then making yeah. the program, right? Yeah. Now, in that year, you made the program, correct? Yeah, in that year. That's when we, we brought stuff in. We like it. We keep it. We don't. We get rid of it. Right. Yeah, because I noticed that on the, on the videos, on the Vimeo videos, I was like, oh, this shit was made last year. I was like, they've been around for a while, and yeah. I just yeah. heard about yeah. it. Yeah. You know? So that's yeah. awesome. All right. So... Uh, you recently teamed up with, with Rick Brown. You just mentioned him. I want to talk a little bit about that. How was that workshop? Uh, was it awesome? Like I was a little, I was a little like dad. Cause I was like, ah, I can't go all the way over there and meet you guys. And meet Rick Brown. I was like, y'all need to do one in LA or something. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it, it was awesome. You know, Rick Brown, uh, if he messages you, Hey, let's talk on the phone. You pick up the phone. You know I mean? He was, the, he was really the only guy out there. And, um, you know, I didn't even know if the guy liked me. You know, here we're doing something <laughs> new. You never know who likes you. He looks pretty serious. I'm not yeah. serious. So, um, you know, I, I figured, you know what, he probably hates us. But, you know, one day we, we were talking back and forth. We are messaging each other. And I thought that was pretty cool. And he said, hey, let's talk in the future. So we set up a phone call. And in a few months of talking back and forth, um, we wound up putting a, putting a summit together. And it worked out. I, it couldn't have worked out better. It yeah. was awesome. The people that showed up were awesome. I mean, yeah. we're still probably talking to every one of them. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it really was. And, and as far as Rick, you know, I never saw him teach before other than on video. Uh, Lily and I were sitting there and we're watching everyone. And I'm thinking, wow, to swing it around your head like 360, that's got to be hard to teach someone who's never done it. So we're watching and they're doing, you know, like kind of like breaking it down into little exercises. And we're just watching. Then all of a sudden, you know, he's giving some cues and everyone in the room is doing 360 at the same time. Yeah. Wow. Like you're just seeing maces everywhere, fluid, perfectly. And we looked at each other and I was like, that's good. You know, that's good. <laughs> I want to put the pressure on me. Like I, I better, I better fucking deliver right now. You know? Yeah. But it, it was really good. And it, you, you can so tell funny. quickly that this, this guy's a professional at what he does. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was fantastic. Yeah. Cause I thought that was 
crazy cool like the combination of you guys which is like more metabolic conditioning it's like i feel yeah. like it has a little bit of like that crossfit feeling because you're like yeah. it's hard go hard yeah. it can be fast yeah. and then here we have rick doing all the traditional stuff so it's interesting to see such a collaboration right yeah yeah it was awesome mixing the both together it was really yeah really good we even made um uh will and emily our clients uh take it we said listen when are you going to get a chance to learn to swing the mace from mr mace man and uh so our our own uh people took it so it was awesome awesome all right so in your program you don't call it a steel mace or a mace you call it a mace bell so i want to know why it's called a mace bell on your program so I, I went with Mace Bell because um, Jake Shannon had brought it over um, and made the first metal one and called it Mace Bell. So, you know, out of respect for lineage, he was really the only one doing it. So um, when we started, and I would wind up having a conversation with him as well, saying, listen, is it all right? I, out of respect for you, I would rather use this name. If you would want me to use Steel Mace, I'll use Steel Mace. And, uh, you know, he was super nice and, you know, said, no, we love what you're doing. And, uh, you know, thank you for doing it. So that's why we do it. It was, um, the, the name Steel Mace, I don't think was that popular when we first started. Yeah. And when we, when we were saying, you know, what are we going to call this? Um, I think, you know, in the future, you're going to see a lot of people use different names so they don't associate themselves with someone. Right. But I think having some type of tradition is important. Right on. So what were the names at that point? Was it Mace Bell, um, Gata maybe? Yeah, some people were Gata. Um, some people were just saying like offset training but they weren't really maces. They were kind of like homemade things where they were just kind of pressing it evenly, having just weight on one side, not the other. Oh, um, okay. But uh, at that time, not a lot of people were uh, doing it. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a lot of instruction and there wasn't a lot of people that had any type of program with a name. So there wasn't even one I could steal, you know? If someone had a cool one, I would have been like, oh, I'll do theirs. But so we're like, all right. It was new breed, so just new breed mace belt wasn't the wasn't the most creative thing, but that's uh, what we went with at the time. Yeah, and I love that you call it new breed because it really is. When I see your stuff, I'm like, that's what attracted me to your program. It was just how different it was because everyone was traditional or flow, and then you guys came in, and I feel like it was a complete hybrid. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what we wanted to display. Well, it's a hybrid of all the fitness that we've been doing. He's been in the martial arts since he's been like, what, six years old? Yeah. Wow. You know, so, I mean, all of that together in our toolbox, we put it together and it, we transition it just with the mace belt. So it's great that you could tell that it's, you know, a hybrid. Of it. Oh, yeah. I think and we it seems all to us like we, oh, oh, sorry. we lost it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it, seemed, it seems to us like we saw your programming, we saw your video, that you got it as soon as you saw it. Yeah, I think it's definitely the CrossFit background. I'm not going to lie. And I think that's what attracted me to it. And maybe like, because I loved hit too. Yeah, yeah. So I had that feeling off of it. And I don't know. I feel like it's it's definitely hybrid and it's different. Yeah. 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 And I think if, if listeners go check out New Breed Mace Bell, I mean, you got to check out their Instagram. It's, it's definitely something to check out. Uh, now, Lily, let's talk about your... Uh, you know, your story with New Breed. Like, I, I'm, I heard that you're the, the mastermind behind it in a way, and I want people to kind of get to know you and get to know your, you know, your yeah. story a little bit. Well, it was same thing. We started together, literally, you know, we doing the private. And, um, you know, once we transitioned to the 21 day, that's when we really launched onto the fitness. So once we started like really heading more into street fitness, because we still were doing martial arts and private training at that time, but literally the fitness just blew up. So we had to like, you know, kind of push a little bit of the martial arts to the side, but we still incorporated it into our routine of MMA conditioning and all that stuff. So um, uh, once we started getting, of course, larger and larger, um, our programming together, you know, we we would go back and forth on it. Like he will put his input, we'll put, I'll put my input. I'll go through it like a little guinea pig. Uh, <laughs> so if I made it, it gets on the board. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so so you were you were the guinea pig. So like that little little guinea pig. To see if you puked on that on if the puke cycle. On that <laughs> and, uh, yeah. You know, right um, reps round, uh, rep ranges, rounds that. Wow. Let's just say, yeah. If if I made it through it, it's yeah. it's getting on there. <laughs> So Lily would give me the feedback afterwards, like, you know, that was great, but, you know, 
12 reps was too much. You know, if we're going to go six rounds, we really need eight reps on that so they can go heavier. And so we're going to get that feedback before it goes into the regular programming. Right. You know, uh, I think that's the problem. Like a lot of gyms have, you know, they, they have an idea about programming, but they throw the original up there for the clients. And, um, you can't do that. You really have to test it out first to see what's working. Sometimes pairing two exercises doesn't work. People get a tight lower back from it. So I know if Lily's telling me, you know what, my hamstrings and back were destroyed. Oh. We maybe have to take one of those hip hinges out of that programming um, and save it for another day. Um, and also what's coming day after day. There's no such thing as a great workout. It's what was programmed the day before that workout and what you're going to program the day after that workout. It's really the whole thing. Like some people come tell me like, oh my gosh, how did you get that? That's a great workout. And to me, I'm like, not really. It's really, to me, it's only genius because of what I gave you yesterday, how it fits in like a puzzle. Um, but, you know, most people get fixated on exercises and workouts rather than the full spectrum of programming. Right. And I'm assuming that's the reason why you actually can guarantee someone yeah. to go to your program and lose weight because you're actually putting thought into every day and how that all pieces together right yes yes and when we transition into the clients they you know they prove it every okay. day in and out in and out prove it in and out you know we have six-year-old ladies we have 20-year-old girls the six-year-old ladies is you know hitting a 60-pound kettlebell so it's like you know they it, it works for any level any age it, it doesn't matter who it is they'll always work into the you know uh level of the person Wow. And because we've repeated it again and again, we have the, the blueprint. When they come in, the 21-day the program that Lily developed, that's still our intro program. We don't let somebody go now into class just from coming in. They want to, but they're not going to last. It's too much to learn. It's too intense to just start like that, and they're going to fall behind too fast. And it's right. kind of like a smack to the ego, you know? Right. Um, but when we have those 10 sessions, that's really the key because – not only do we get to see how they move, program those 10 sessions that have been done a thousand times before so we know where that person should be at, but we develop a relationship with that client and that builds retention for when they do go to class. They're confident, they like it, they trust me and Lily, we both work with them at the time. So uh, that's really how you build that retention so you can keep growing. Right. Dang. I'm, I'm loving this episode already. God, so much new breed, like, info. All right, so um, for, like, uh, listeners, just average people listening, you know, who are into fitness, how would they get a hold of your program? I mean, because, I mean, you're, what, in New Jersey, right? Yes. Yeah. Like, how would someone, you know, get a hold of you guys and try to do this stuff or maybe get a hold of a trainer? Like, how would they go about that? So like right now our our big project where we're doing a lot of videoing is creating an affiliate program where our certified coaches can create their own affiliates and then have access to our programming just maybe a week behind ours so they can follow that same programming and they would can expect those same results so that we can kind of duplicate it we could we'll we'll help a thousand people in our career no matter how many people we work with you know we're going to help a thousand people but if we can have a hundred affiliates help a thousand people, then we can make a difference. Um, so we would really like that. Like uh, certify, we're trying to get as many certified coaches as possible. And then from there, I would love to have one in each state um, representing our program and being able to give our programming um, basically live in our time, you know? That's awesome. So that's, that's kind of part of the reason why you started the affiliation part. And when is this going to start? Because I think you just announced it. Um, or is that already, has that started or? Yeah, no, we just announced it. Um, we're still shooting a lot of videos and shooting a lot of instructional so that if you were to have access to this in your place, you can do the intro the same way we do our intro. You can assess the clients the same way we assess our clients. You could run that same 21 day program and get the same results. Um, this I think is more than rather just like an affiliate where you're going to use our name that we're going to be a mentor, um, to anyone who is an affiliate where we are going to be in contact with them all the time. That so, is sweet. That's yeah. Awesome. I don't, I don't want a thousand that I don't know. I want a hundred that we have over our house, you know, right on, right on. I love the idea behind that. Um, so personally, for listeners, again, that are just beginning, getting into MACE, uh, your personal um, experience with the MACE, 
what type of benefits have you seen with your body? Um, and maybe what type of benefits have you seen other people get from the mace? Obviously, they, you know, they lose weight with your program, but just overall, uh, yeah. what are your thoughts on that? You want this first? I I feel like I'm talking so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the maze, like, you know, we will get a good result because our programming, you know, we've been using it over and over, but once we incorporated the maze, it just, I don't know, it's just... It, like, I wish I could give the science Yeah, behind, like, right? it's yeah. like, you know, you found that great protein shake that you're like, oh my God, I feel so good, or that, that extra creatine that gives you, I don't, it's like that thing on, like, second level like yeah. it just yeah. the new driver it, yes yeah. it's like a new driver it's like um people you know they of course they lose body fat they get stronger the lifts that they do you know like even regular dumbbell overhead presses the ones that were shaky now it's just solid they're getting stronger it you know without having to do so much of the other mm -hmm. stuff some of the programming with the maze carries over into their other exercises and we see how solid it becomes yeah right without having to repeat the same exercise over and over it just transitions to the other exercises and makes them stronger at it yeah, i think i think most of the make people work with mace belt whether it's our style or not realize the difference in their stabilizer muscles right away from the from the offset weight um we we've had people go from 185 pound bench press and in a few months be 300 pound bench pressers Wow. Now, if you would have asked me before, was that going to be possible? I, I, don't, I don't think they were a 300-pound bench presser, but I don't think they ever would have hit those deep stability muscles uh, without the mace training. Right. So I think and, really that's the magic behind it. Yeah. And so for people who don't know what stabilizer muscles are, can you go a little bit into what stabilizer muscles are and then like how it helps with that? Yeah. Um, so core muscles and stabilizer muscles, we're going to look at it as the same thing. We're going to use the analogy, um, I'm going to steal this, but this is not mine. Um, you, can't shoot a, you can't shoot a cannon from a canoe. You might have that strength, but if your body senses instability in a joint, in, in, in anywhere in your body, it's not going to give you the same amount of power. So imagine uh, two hockey players fighting on the ice. They always grab each other before they punch because they want to try to create some type of stability because their body senses the ice is unstable and mm. reduces their power. Okay, so now I think what's happening is our brain is sensing everything's stable. All those joints are stable. So it gives you more strength that you should have had to begin with. Right on. All right. That was awesome. That was a good explanation. Is that good? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, so uh, what, for complete beginners, what type of advice would you give them? Because you guys are awesome trainers. I mean, again, go check them out on Instagram. Uh, you guys are phenomenal. What type of advice would you give them? Like if they wanted to use the maze, the new breed, you know, way? Yeah. Um, the, I, so the certification now, we're almost like boiling it down to more basic. Um, I think in the cert now we teach eight exercises, all right, that are super basic, the half moon, the shovel, the circle clean. Those basics, starting with that in a controlled movement, not just whipping them around, a controlled movement. I think is the best way to see results right away. And I'm talking in a matter of three or four sessions, you see a, a difference in the density in your muscles. Um, you feel a difference when you're moving in different directions that you feel stronger. And people with bad backs, they feel better because that type is, it's better than like a straight deadlift. That, that soft rounded back movement seems to go better with people to make them move better, more athletic. So it's all about for us being able to absorb the amount of force that's coming we believe that's what makes people stronger, not just constantly trying to lift heavier weights. Uh, and I love that word, absorb. That's the, like, the number one word that stuck to me when I actually took your certification, um, just absorbing the weight, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. If, you really, if you absorb it and really stick the positions, you're getting so much out of the movement um, rather than trying to just go super fast. Now, we will make you go fast, once you're doing the exercise, but we're going to make you go fast to the next exercise. Maybe the next exercise, a body weight exercise. We still want that work capacity, but we never give up the control of the mace. Right on. Yeah. And, and I think that's really a good thing you brought up. Controlling the mace. Don't let the mace control you. Right. Because we don't, yes. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of people getting into the mace and they're not uh, putting emphasis on controlling it. And so they're, you know, risk of injury that way. Right. Yeah, and especially um, we deal with a lot of different clientele, like I repeated, 
you know, older, younger, people that have injuries, they play the sport, so they can't do certain lifts. So the mace for us, you know, helps it out in that way of um, uh, making like a, like a, like an alternative, like an alternative for them. And it's gave them the same results as if we would have used a traditional weight or something else. Right. So that's how we always write our stuff because we have to work with so many different, you know, stuff that c comes thrown at us, you know, injury, not injured us, you know, what, you know, older, young, it, you know, there's always something. So we always have to like, you know, come up with something to always modify or, you know, uh, help whatever it is that's getting thrown at us. Right, right. We, we don't want to dumb down someone's program yeah. just because, you know what, they played, you know, college football and now they can't press overhead. So now that with the mace, you're not going to notice the difference. You're going to, if they do, you know, the, the vertical pressing that we do, their shoulders are going to look as good as our guys that put 135 over their head. They don't, right. they don't have to uh, take a, you know, a backseat to any of the traditional exercises with the mace. Right on. Now, um, in your in your program, I see that you guys use a different style of mace, and we went into it, but maybe sharing a little bit about that mace, and then maybe going into like, does it really make a difference, like the shape or and uh, and the size? Yeah, um, I think the the immortal. Yeah, the immortal mace. Yeah. Uh, Matt Brown, the MMA fighter, um, he had he actually builds equipment, and I didn't know that. Um, I just found out on Instagram and wound up talking with him. The mace that he has, it's like a, I can't even like, like a sledgehammer yeah. top to it, yeah. like a big can of tomato sauce. Yes. Right? <laughs> big can of tomato sauce. <laughs> yeah. And it, but it falls heavy. So it forces that control. Um, and also whatever the, the weight on it is, it feels a lot heavier than that weight. So um, uh, also the thicker handle, I think, adds a lot to the forearms as well. It exhausts you when you use that one. So, you know, sometimes people be like, oh, I use 15. Oh yeah, but did you use a 15 pound immortal? Or did you use a regular 15? <laughs> so it's like, oh, you're not, you didn't do it hard if you didn't do the immortal, but um, <laughs> yeah. So that, that's his, and he originally wanted those just to be hammers. And we just started talking. I said, you know, what's the length of those things? I think we might be able to use it in our program. And then that's how we wound up started talking about it and, uh, and working with his stuff. Right on. Yeah, because I noticed, because I was using the, the steel maces when I was doing your program, and I was like, I don't know. I don't think I'm absorbing as much weight as I want to with this, you know, like compared yeah. to how you look with that huge immortal. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? I'm missing out on something. <laughs> That's good about it, too, because it, it, it looks like a monster on video. So, it, you know, when you're doing it, it looks like you're doing something, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I fell in love with it. I was like, I got to go. I got to ask him about that. Yeah, Matt, Matt Brown, um, Immortal Combat Equipment, uh, yeah. dot com, I think, right? Yeah, uh, yeah he has there, the, um, but he calls them hammers, war hammers. hammers. Yeah. War hammers. Yeah, sort of like uh, the uh, Become Stronger ones, he calls them war clubs. So I, I find it interesting, all the different names that, Name. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that are coming out. It's, it's really cool. And I think that, that war club I have is kind of similar to that. Uh, the one that you guys use. So I've been using it a little more and, and it's definitely different. And, and yeah. I advise listeners to try different maces because they do yeah. feel different. And I yeah. think it had a lot to do with the shape of the head and then how much longer the handle was yeah. on that one specifically. Also that set for set has a longer handle. So their 20 feels a lot different than a normal 20. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. I, I haven't really purchased any heavier weights. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't know, but that's cool to know. Yeah. Yeah. The longer, the longer the lever, the the harder that thing falls, and yeah. it makes the exercise a lot harder. See, that's kind of like what I felt with with the become stronger one too. Um, so, I guess I mean my my I guess my thing is uh, how do like just average people because I mean I know you can go on onit dot com and like find you know all of Eric Milan's stuff. Like, do you ever have like? these future plants maybe sharing those movements that you guys have with new breed or anything like that for like, you know, people just getting into mace or you're just going to straight up go with the affiliation and just a certification for coaches. Yeah, I think, um, well, the certification online, I think that's a great way for people to start. Um, that's really the, the core of our system okay. and that's, that's unchanging. I believe that you could take those core exercises and start to pair them and, 
you probably have 10 years of programming just from that, that, and you'd never do the same workout twice. Right. Um, so people that, that, that do program their own workout, I think that that's probably a, a really decent way to start. That's plenty of information for them. Um, the other stuff, I think we're going to try to really get to our affiliates. Um, just so I think in, you know, in my mind, Mace is still in a, in a, in an early stage compared right. to the rest of the fitness world. I think if we were to go in a regular gym right now and do it, I think they'd be floored. They have no idea what we're doing. Probably ask you to leave, you know, but, um, <laughs> two years from now, when I think it will start to pick up more mainstream, I want our affiliates to have a huge head start on it, you know, to really have, uh, them be the only show in town to go to, because that's really the, the only way to stay, uh, to stay in this business. You got to be a couple of years ahead. Right. And you know what? We discussed that over the phone a couple of months ago. The whole Mace isn't very popular yet. Where do you see Mace going in a couple of years uh, personally? Um, well, for us, I mean, we're, we're dedicated to, to jamming Mace down everybody's throat um, till <laughs> nauseum, you know, <laughs> until they're sick of us and they don't want to hear from us anymore. So that's our plan. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a great game plan, but it's our plan. And that's what we're going with, you know. <laughs> Right but uh, it's, it's going to become more popular. Um, I, I feel it could go either way. People are going to feel it's a niche thing, um, and they just like doing certain movements. If we can really push the benefits to people, I, you already you're starting to see strength and conditioning experts starting to touch on it. They're starting to use it. They're not mm -hmm. saying, oh, I'm going to go on Steel Mace Warrior and say how great this is. They're not saying that yet. Right. But they are using it, so they're obviously watching. Um, yeah, but I don't, I don't know down the road if they don't see the benefit, if they don't really invest the time to work it with their clients. And I mean, thousands of clients, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to see the benefits and I'm scared it'll fall by the wayside as, Oh, it's just an extra thing we like to do at the end, not a, a main part of our program. Right. Right. Now you mentioned strength and conditioning so far. I think we've talked about the metabolic conditioning part. Do you guys use this tool for strength? And if so, what type of tips can you give on that? You, me, me. Okay. Um, <laughs> sometimes I feel bad that I'm talking so much, you know, but, um, you know, I, I just love the double team today. That's yeah, awesome. Right. <laughs> I go in and then she's in. Right? Yeah, right? You know. <laughs> so, um, you know, with the strength, I feel that, um, I, I don't feel there, if you had no dumbbells and no barbell, and I dropped you in the middle of nowhere with a 15 or 20 pound mace, I feel you could come back as strong as the person that has access to everything right now in their gym. Right on. That, that's, how, that's how we approach it. Um, you could work every body part. Um, some people are like, oh, but you can't work heavy legs. Listen, if you don't know how to program split jumps to deep squats and blow up your legs, then you know, that's your problem. You don't need to yeah. put 405 on your back you know, and, and blow out your spine to have decent thighs. Um, but the programming, uh, layering the stuff on top of each other, hypertrophy, um, I think comes from the fact of, like we said, controlling the negative and the concentric being more explosive, exploding it up to those high rack positions is exhausting. And you know what, as long as you're eating enough protein, you're going to gain just as much muscle and get to your genetic potential, just as if you were using a barbell, dumbbells, or anything else. Right. So, yeah. Um, Cause I think a lot of people see the mace and especially cause uh, it's a thing right now to use the 10, right. And maybe men go up to the 15, but yeah. I feel like a lot of people don't know exactly how to use it for strength and conditioning. So it's cool that, you know, you gave your input on that because it's important to let people know that you could use it. For, yeah. For it, it, and it, it, it does go along with the programming and that's how you could move up to the 20 or the 25 because certain moves you do need a heavier mace if because if not it's like you're just doing a body weight thing and yeah you it that's not hypertrophy but if you do have a heavier mace and some of the moves you do them with that that would work with that but you have to know the programming to incorporate it in that structure yeah and go. our athletic development program that we're um, working on now we have a whole section of Olympic lifting where Lily's going to teach Olympic lifting with the mace, with that offset. What? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's so exciting. When you get to see that, then you start to see like, wow, like in life, that's the way it is. You know, you never get a nice balanced weight. You don't get to 
have exactly 50 pounds on both sides of the bar. So when you see um, Lily stick those positions and, you know, the explosiveness of it, um, the, the results are unbelievable. It, it really is – you're getting the best of both worlds because you're getting stronger, get, you get more athletic all at the same time. That's fantastic. Now, I'm excited to see you guys post some before and afters, especially the athletic part. It'd be awesome to see that. Um, are you guys planning to get a website soon? Because I don't think you guys have a website yet, right? No. So, you know, strength, you know, strength and weaknesses. Our, our, <laughs> strength is, <laughs> our strength is being in the gym, taking care of clients. Um, right. I know a lot of experts are going to talk about, well, that's not a business. You're not leveraging your business. But I can't expect someone to come in for $20 an hour and know every one of my clients' injuries. I can't expect them to know what they're going through in their life right now, you know? Right. So um, one of the things when we mentor people, I say, you know, watch Lily from the time a client comes in the room. They come in that door, they got their head down, they're slumped. Oh, I was going to miss today because, you know, work sucked. And Lily's first job that she does is to change their whole state of mind because you can't train in that state of mind. So you watch from the time they come in to the time they interact with Lily, block out the training. Just watch the person, the posture they have when they leave. And that's the magic. That's what okay? matters. That's, yeah, that's the magic that happens. Now that person, they're going to get results. They're going to tell their friend. We do almost 99.99% of our business from referrals. Um, once we weren't CrossFit anymore, we never even replaced a website. Um, we've got a broken phone that keeps cutting off when we're talking to people. <laughs> I got to call them back. And, and they must be like, this guy is like, this guy really doesn't want my money. You know? <laughs> but um, we, we've always been fortunate. We don't have to chase clients. Um, you really, if you have um, a program that's getting results, and your people are talking you up, that is the most powerful business model that there is, you know? Right. And right. the ability to be selfless, to work with clients, and it's all about them when they're there, you know? We don't talk about, oh, like, oh, I'm going to put up a video of, uh, you know, back when I was 17 and I did this or whatever. It, too much stuff is about the trainer. Right. Um, Everything is about them. Make your client the superstar. You know, they, they're, the, they're the star in their own movie, so you're just assisting them. And if you do that, then you know what? I, I don't have to send out emails. I don't have to do uh, what's that? The Groupon. The group I don't have to do Groupon. Yeah. yeah. I don't have to do Groupon. Yeah. yeah. I did it one time. I did it do it one time. I want to take care. <laughs> and that's because we had to go from, we moved um, because we have bought, we purchased our gym, our building for our gym. Oh, right. On. So that's so to like transition that we're not burning County CrossFit. We are new free fitness mm -hmm. that get our name out faster than ever. But let's just say we just stop there yeah. with yeah. that ever again. Yeah, we, <laughs> we did like let's just we did like 200 intros in like a month and a half. Oh, wow. So, yeah. It was, wow. Just, crazy. That was a one time, you know. Yeah. One time thing. Yeah. One so uh, you, you'd rather take your clientele in slow and keep them you know, keep them for a long time. We have a decent amount of people that are over a decade in our gym. You wow. Know, they, they've gone yeah. from our little gym. Loyal. Yeah. Yes. Really, really loyal. Our little gym where they used to do chin-ups and hit their head on the ceiling. Yeah. You know, <laughs> break their head on the plaster, right? Wow. Our 700 square foot gym. They've gone yeah. from there to this building with us. And uh, you know what? That's honestly, you know, people ask us because, you know, 17 years, we've never taken a vacation. Wow. You know, our our day off is Christmas. So uh, Thanksgiving morning, we're with our clients working out. So we've done it. And a lot of people are like, oh my God, that's crazy or whatever. But we truly get to do what we love to do. You know, yeah. so, and, uh, and it's because of the clients staying so long in that retention, you know. Wow. Mad respect to you guys, man. Awesome trainers. All right. So where can people find you online? Um, and Or listeners and viewers. Uh, where can they find you online? Um, and do you guys have any resources you, you'd want to recommend for someone getting into MACE training? Okay, so our Instagram is probably best, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, our MACE Bell Instagram. Um, our MACE Bell certification.com is where our uh, certification is. You can right. contact us through there, too. Uh, once you get the program, contact us right away, and we're going to walk you through it, walk you how to do the testing. 
It's not a program where you get it and you're on your own. So um, that's probably the two best ways to, to get a hold of us. And uh, you can instant message us on, uh, on any one of our Instagrams. You know, we have a uh, new breed HQ, new breed fitness HQ. Um, that's just our gym. And then we have our Mace Bell program, which is our at just, new breed Mace Bell. at new breed Mace Bell, which is just our straight Mace Bell. All right. Right on. And listeners, viewers, I recommend you breed Mace Bell. I took it and it was actually different. I'm not going to lie. I was like, wait a second. Cause I was used to like this way of going through the course, you know, bam, you get your certification at the end. There's like, you guys were like, no, give me a phone call, submit some videos. And I love that. I love that type of attention you, you gave me personally. It was awesome. So I recommend it. Um, the, the actual course, the, the movements, everything about it is so hybrid. It's so awesome. And I think if you're into hits or CrossFit or anything like crazy like that, that would be new breed, right guys? Yeah, yes. Perfect. Yes. Definitely. All right. So I'll go ahead and add all the links below. If you're watching this um, on video, I'll add the links below. Um, if you're on YouTube or on my blog post for uh, new breed. And do you guys have any workshops coming up? Um, we're, we're working on a few. I can't really announce it yet because, okay. you know, there's no confirmation. But, yeah, we will be doing more workshops and more yes. seminars. Are you guys coming to the West Coast? I'm, I'm on <laughs> that one. <laughs> you ain't ready yet, huh? I'm like, you better tell me up ahead of time. <laughs> no. We'll, we'll make sure we'll, we'll send notice ahead of time. <laughs> if we're traveling, we'll send notice. <laughs> right on. All right, guys. Well, thank yes. you so much, Lily. Thank you, Daniel, for being on the Still Mace Warrior podcast. I truly, truly appreciate you guys. I feel blessed to have you guys on here. And may the universe always flow with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Yes. Yeah.